So, a new world record has been claimed. From Israel all the way to the island of Crete. Almost a thousand kilometers further. And this time not even from an altitude high up, actually only 40 meters above sea level. If this is indeed the island of Crete, then the people who defend the globe have some explanation to do. Because I believe that no matter how much refraction you throw at it, this is pretty bonkers. So, um... Let's quickly check if this is indeed the island of Crete. First of all, a very special thanks to Shimshon for sharing his observation. And also, good of him to provide that much valuable information. Link is in the description. He shared, for example, his exact location and the time and date of the observation. So, using SunCalc, his observation and the day of observation, we can see that the middle of the sun touches the horizon when the sun was seen in the direction of 292.46 degrees from north, from the geographic north. This means slightly north of west. You can easily check this for yourself. Just find that minute where the altitude is the closest to zero. Then the azimuth gives you the direction of sunset. Heading over to Google Earth and drawing a line from the observer, in the direction of 292.46 degrees, we can see that this straight line hits uh, not Crete, not even the little island south of Crete, but it also mm, it almost hits Sicily. It passes north of Tunisia, pretty close, uh, past this funny-looking island called La Galita, all the way to Guardamar del Segura in Spain. A whopping 3,275 kilometers from Israel. Oh my, this is definitely a world record. So it does not hit Crete at all. Crete is just a couple of degrees north of the line of sight. But that's weird. Because the observer himself was pretty confident that this actually was Crete. He even prepared for years this observation. At least, that's the rumor. So what went wrong? Oh, by the way, Shimshon was not actually filming Spain. Uh, just to be clear, I, that was a joke, but you never know. When we have a look at a video from Taboo Conspiracy, who mirrored Shimshon's original video, but also did his own analysis of it, he uses SunCalc too, just like me. As you can see from this rough diagram, SunCalc placed the sun in direct line with Crete and what he noticed was that on the map presented, the line of sight towards the sunset indeed crosses the island of Creta. So why did my Google Earth say that 292.5 degrees passes south of Creta, all the way to Spain, but SunCalc shows it pointing directly at Creta, and also north of Sicily instead of south, and at the Pyrenees instead of, well, the south coast of Spain? This is probably where the confusion started. Because if Shemshan prepared his observation using a map like this, he was doomed to fail. Remember, the Earth is a globe. So every time that you make a flat map of the Earth, you can't represent it just one on one. You need to use a type of projection to get it flat. And in the case of SunCalc, the Google Maps map is presented, which is a Mercator projection. The Mercator projection is a cylindrical projection with many, many advantages, but when you draw a straight line on a Mercator projection and you wrap that around the ball, the line will not run straight anymore. And vice versa, when you draw a great circle or the shortest route on a sphere, that will appear curved on the map. Maybe you've seen those flight paths on a map. Maybe you've seen the ISS path. That doesn't run straight while the ISS is running straight and these aircrafts try to, well, be as efficient as possible. Even the Terminator line on our map on SunCalc is in fact a straight line all around a sphere, but it looks very curved. Remember, Earth is a ball, and a flat map has distortions, so when you draw a straight line originating in Israel at an angle of 292.5 degrees on the map, it will be accurate just at the start, but slowly deviate from the actual line that runs straight on a ball. 
This line has not the purpose to point at a specific location on Earth. It has the purpose of pointing in a specific direction compared to north. And that, of course, is a local direction tied to the point of observation. To give you an even clearer example, this line towards the sun also crosses Southampton Island in Canada. But the shortest route to Southampton Island is more like a 336 degrees heading. So this line is pointing at the sun, but when we check the location where the sun is right overhead, at that time the subsolar point, it is here, just west of Puerto Rico. Well, that observation fits the globe model, but that again means that we just can't follow this straight line on the map to reach that subsolar point. So, now that we know it's not Creta, at least if the Earth uh, is a sphere, hey, wait a second. What if the Earth is not a ball, but actually a flat Earth? Then, of course, all the previous arguments, they fall apart. Can we know in what direction Creta was from Israel if Earth is flat? Well, I guess not really, because nobody actually agreed on what the Earth looks like if it's flat. But um, I'll be using the Gleason's map for this. And again, I know that a lot of flat earthers will right now say that that is not the flat earth map that they use and it's a straw man, but for that matter, I guess, because there isn't an official flat earth map, I can just use whatever I like. And the following segment, by the way, works, or should I say it doesn't work, on any of the flat earth maps that I have seen ever. When we draw a straight line from the observer to Crete, and we compare it with the geographic north, we end up with an angle of 295 degrees, and that is pretty close to the expectation of sun calc. But if we extend this line behind Crete, that is, well, one of the possible locations where the sun was during this observation. Hey, was the sun not above Puerto Rico at that time? Why does the line not cross Puerto Rico if the sun was actually overhead there. Well, according to Flat Earth, it must be somewhere, I don't know, south of the equator? Maybe the map is wrong. Uh, maybe we need to wrangle it a bit like, like this to make it work. Um, but well, speaking about land masses that are actually moving to make it work, uh, the shaking of the camera during the observation was very apparent and a bit annoying, so I tried to stabilize it so that we could have a better view of the silhouette. And what I noticed was that the so-called island, compared to the platform, was actually moving to the right. And I used the oil platform as my reference, which was actually not easy since the compression of the video kept the left of the oil rig stable while the right of the platform was shaking. Um, nonetheless, it became painfully obvious that this was a moving island. Or was the platform moving? Or was the observer moving? One thing that we know for sure was moving was actually this floating island in the front over here that is obscuring the top of the sun. I'm not really sure what island that is called, but I would call it a cloud. No joke. Everybody understand that this here is just a bunch of clouds moving to the left? And although Shimshon used an infrared filter, that just isn't magic and you can't see through everything. You can see definitely further and more, but not through everything. This cloud clearly obstructed the top of the sun while moving to the left. Maybe this so-called island, this silhouette in the back, is a cloud too? Clouds have looked like mountains before. Seriously, they do, and I have been confused while walking in the mountains. Like, is that a mountain or a cloud? Here, um, there's one image that is a mountain. Can you guess which one it is? I'm kidding, <laughs> they're all clouds. But uh, clouds look like mountains, sometimes. And they move. That's what clouds do. So I checked several sources of satellite imagery for that day to see if there were any clouds in the neighborhood. And uh, <laughs> there were a lot. And they moved in the correct direction. For the observer, looking at the sunset, they appear to move from left to right, just as in the footage. And even the infrared images showed a lot of clouds. So 
meaning that even with an infrared filter, the clouds would be visible. But we already knew that, since these clouds, that everybody agrees upon are clouds, were plainly visible. And when I connect the observer with the island south of Creta, using a straight line, forgive me, uh, straight lines on a flat map, I know, but then if we do that, we can see that there are many candidates for being our island lookalike. Uh, this one here, for example, literally casts a shadow exactly at our observer here at the shore of Israel. Maybe you've noticed that uh, there are two directions in these clouds. One in this case is to the east, but one is to the southeast. So it's not uncommon that two different layers of clouds move in two different directions. If we have a closer look, for example, over here, we can clearly see that. And this is happening over the Mediterranean Sea too during the observation. Even though it's less clear here in the Mediterranean Sea, we can observe that it is happening. And that of course explains then why the clouds, probably lower, move to the left, while these other clouds in the back move to the right. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Is this the world record of the furthest point-to-point -point observation done on this planet? I think not. Is this the Isle of Crete? Well, <clears throat> the observation was done in the, the wrong direction and um, the thing was actually moving, so I would argue also not. Is the Earth flat? Well, that's a big question of yours, but remember we just observed a sunset something that is impossible on a flat earth or at least i have not seen convincing evidence that it is possible we also observed a sun that didn't shrink in angular size something that should if earth is flat and the sun disappeared in the vanishing point <clears throat> and the sun also well appeared in a completely wrong direction at least according to one of the flat earth maps that i could download so after this analysis, and um, well, here's my uh, humble opinion, I think uh, we can say with high confidence that nope, it's still a globe. Take care, my fellow apes. Bye-bye.